Um, many of us, I continue to um, teach and I uh, instruct that many of you are in a transitory period of your life where God is taking you through tremendous levels of transition and acceleration. And many of you, God is moving so rapidly and, 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 and uh, at an accelerated pace in your life that he's literally blowing your mind. And many of you, you're having a struggle trying to um, adjust to the changes that God is bringing in your life. He's bringing social changes. He's bringing spiritual changes. He's adjusting you mentally. He's, a, he's adjusting you economically because God is ushering you to a, a greater dimension of existence. There's a you that you have never seen that God is getting ready to bring out of you. And so some people cannot understand or perceive the things that God is doing in your life at this time. But look at somebody and say, you might as well get ready because the new me is coming. The new me is coming. And so um, because of this, the enemy is constantly centering in on you as a target. He's making you the center of his attention in this season because his, his desire is that you will not reach that pivotal point in your purpose and your destiny where you realize who you really are in the kingdom of God. That you really realize that you are not weak, that you're not vulnerable, that you're not a victim, but that you are powerful and that there's great potential in you and that there's a seed of greatness that God is ready to bring out of you. Look at somebody say something is in you, something is in you, something is in you. And what you don't understand is that many of you, God is using the seed of affliction, the furnace of affliction to begin to purge and purify you and take and remove those things that are unnecessary or no longer needed. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the fire is to burn up impurities and those things in your life that are no longer beneficial at this particular juncture. And so because the enemy is trying to uh, uh, affect your growth and your potential and your ability to plow forward, he's attacking you and trying to exploit five different areas in your life. Mm -hmm. The first thing is your imagination. Can you shout imagination? He attempts to hijack your mind and imprint false images concerning who you really are in God. Satan tries to constantly minimize your worth and reduce your self-image. In other words, he plays tricks on your imagination. Your imagination is the creative capacity of your mind. So the enemy begins to paint false images in your mind as it relates to your personal perception and perspective. And so he wants you to see yourself smaller than you really are. He wants you to minimize your greatness and your status. And so he battles you in, the, in your imagination. He makes enemies that don't even exist. He makes you think that people don't like you who really like you. He makes you think one thing in reality it's another, say my imagination. That's why Paul said the weapons of our warfare are not corner but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. The Bible says casting down every vain what? imagination. Why did Paul connect warfare with the mind? Because the first level of warfare always begins in your mind because the battle is because the enemy is trying to control your mind because your mind is the control center of your thought process. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All of you in here now is the sum total of your mind, of your thoughts. Your thoughts is your ideology. It's your it's the, it's the ideas that come to your mind. And so if the enemy can reduce your thoughts or bring your thoughts to a place of negativity, then you will always see yourself in a negative position. And so he attacks your imagination. Shout imagination. Another thing that he tries to exploit is your ignorance. Shout ignorance. He attempts to keep you uninformed and unaware of the greatness that is within you by the lack of information or revelation. In other words, the Bible says that my people perish for their lack of knowledge. You will never be able to be elevated above your information level and your revelation level. 
Uh, the lack of information will keep you limited in a system or a structure or a lifestyle that is beneath what God has ordained for your life. And if you don't take the necessary time to invest in your spirit, to the Bible says, listen, the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to be constantly receiving word that will empower you, that will redirect your thinking, that will change your mind and elevate your expectations in life. Glory to God. I can tell what you've been listening to by your level of faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Look at somebody say, who's been in your ear? You need somebody that will constantly re-emphasize your faith level. Who will tell you that my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. You need somebody that will touch and agree with you regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstance. Who will begin to speak the word of God over your life. That you're coming out of this. That you're going to have the victory at the end of this battle. Come on, look at somebody. I say speak to me, speak to me. You cannot allow, afford to surround your people who are going to allow you to stay beneath where God has that desire you to go. If somebody said, please don't leave me there. Don't, 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 don't leave me there. Speak words of encouragement. Speak words of prophetic empowerment. Call the things that be not as though they were. Don't just speak to my trash. Speak to my treasure. Treasures. So he wants you to keep you ignorant. He wants you uh, to remain ignorant of your potential, your power, and your purpose. But look at somebody say the devil is alive. That's why the Bible says, after all, out of all, out of all your gift to get an understanding. In other words, you should be striving daily to begin to grab a greater level of understanding. In other words, you should be able to comprehend the deeper things of God. You just don't want information. You want revelation. Information is knowledge, but revelation is an unveiling of that truth uh, that begins to come alive on the inside of you where it just don't hit your mind but it awakens in your spirit. Yeah. Somebody shout revelation. revelation. Don't allow the enemy to keep you ignorant. Paul said, I will not have brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Another text says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. And the more insecurities you have concerning yourself, the more the enemy will exploit your weaknesses. Insecure. These are personal struggles and weaknesses which are derived from feelings of, number one, inferiority. In other words, you feel inferior to other folks. Inferior means you feel less than everybody else. Whenever you have this battle and this weakness in your spirit and in your life, the enemy will always exploit it. Somebody say inferior. Inferior, you feel that you're less, that you're not just at the at the same caliber of everybody else. You feel intimidated when you walk in the room. You feel that you're not up at everybody else's status, and so the enemy begins to exploit your insecurity. And a lot of times, the reason that we lash out at people, the reason that we fuss and fight, the reason that we have so many internal battles is because of our personal insecurities. But what God will do, he will force you to look in the mirror and deal with your own insecurities. I know because he made me do it all the time. Hallelujah. The only way to get over a weakness is when God forces you to face that weakness. Somebody say insecurities. So the first thing is within your insecurities is feeling inferior. The second thing is feeling insignificant. These are the two areas as it relates to your insecurities that the enemy will try to exploit and use to his personal advantage. Uh, when you feel insig insignificant, if you feel that you're unwanted or you're unneeded. And anytime you feel that you're unwanted and unneeded, you begin to do extreme things to get attention. Hallelujah. And the enemy can recognize these weaknesses and begin to exploit them and use them to his own personal advantage. Five areas the enemy attempts to exploit. One, your imagination. One, set two, your ignorance. Three, your insecurities. I hope you're taking notes. And four, this is a good one, your injuries. Wow. Your injuries. 
Uh, this is the places where you have experienced pain and disappointment and, and, and these things in life that the enemy tries to remind you over and over again what has happened. He keeps replaying that situation and circumstance over that trauma, that trauma. He will not allow you to get past that because he wants your life to be categorized by one moment and one incident and try to, to, try to make you uh, derive your value from that particular situation. But you have to get to the point that you recognize that you are more than what happened to you. Oh God, I'll give, just give my little Jesus so they can wake up. You are more than what happened to you. You have to begin to understand that you can get past that struggle. You can get past that incident or that accident and that you are not your weaknesses. You are not your struggles. Hallelujah. You do not have to stay bound to your injuries. You can, re you can recover from a fall. You can recover from disappointment. You can recover from trouble and hurt. Whatever the injury is, look at somebody say, God got you in rehab right now. Oh God, I come to tell somebody, wake up, might as well give you a little preaching, that God said you've been on injured reserve, but it's time to get back in the game. Ooh, tell somebody, come on, Victor Reserve. Come on. You've been on Injury Reserve for like three months now. Come on back in the game. You've been on Injury Reserve for like two years now. You've been on the bitch long enough because you stared and you scared and you're afraid to get out on an ankle that you injured. But God says, Heal, get on back in the game. Once you get traumatized, you're afraid to put pressure on your injury because you remember what happened before. Oh God. And so now it's no longer physical, it's mental. He's, he's handicapping you mentally, psychologically. The physical aspect of the injury has been healed, but now the enemy keeps replaying it over and over in your mind so that you will not have the courage to get back in the game. But grab a neighbor hand, shake it like you're crazy, and say, get back in the game. Don't say this is the fourth quarter you need it. <laughs> this is the fourth quarter of the game and God needs your talents he needs your gift he needs your anointing look at somebody say tag me in coach let me get back in the game give me the ball this season and watch me work watch me bring the team back from behind I know oh God Ooh, look at somebody say, give me the ball, give me the ball. If you don't know what to do with that anointing, if you don't know what to do with that gift, give it to me and watch me maximize it and take it to the next level. Tell them, come on, into reserve. Come on, come, come, come. come. You've been on into reserve way too long. Hallelujah. The next thing that the enemy will attempt to exploit is your identity. Your identity. The eight to the real you, the one that's copyrighted, copyrighted by God. The one that's patented by the Father. Wait till this version of you stops forward and begin to operate in your calling. Give the Lord a hand praise. Somebody say, I'm getting ready to find my real identity. So let's review. Five, five areas the enemy attempts to exploit. Your imagination, your ignorance, your insecurities, your injuries, and your identity. Hallelujah.